This is a production of Cornell University. Good morning, everyone. My name is Matt Ryan. I'm an uh, assistant professor of sustainable cropping systems at Cornell. And I want to talk with you about um, two strategies that I'm working on, uh, cover crop interseeding and perennial grains. And uh, I'm really talking about keeping the soil covered. Uh, this is a, a key strategy for improving soil health. And uh, so just some, some issues that I'd like to bring up here. Annual grain crop production often degrades soil health, and especially when we're using soil tillage. Uh, we know that cover crops can help uh, offset this, this degradation and improve soil health, but they're not widely adopted. So in New York, based on 2014 data, we're about at 10% adoption of cover crops across uh, all of the cropland in New York. So the solution here is cover crop interseeding. And so you saw a similar picture earlier. This is a cover crop that was drill interseeded into uh, between rows of, of corn. And uh, what's really exciting about this is that um, people have been interseeding uh, cover crops for a very long time. They've been aerial seeding, broadcast seeding. Uh, this is a, a new piece of equipment that, uh, that actually drills the seed, uh, improves the seed to soil context. So it makes a small slit and it, it deposits the seed right into the soil surface there. And uh, this is a cover crop mixture. There's a lot of interest and excitement about cover crop mixtures. And so traditionally in New York, um, when we were cover cropping, uh, we would typically be limited to cereal rye. Cereal rye is a great cover crop. Uh, this is a, uh, it's a standby cover crop. It's uh, been used by uh, thousands and thousands of farmers for a very long time, uh, but it, it's limited in the functions that it provides. It's great for cycling nutrients uh, and, using it as, and using it as a catch crop to uh, prevent uh, nutrient leaching. Uh, but it's, uh, that's about all it does. It provides a lot of biomass if you let it grow. Uh, and so what we're seeing here with uh, cover crop interseeding is, uh, is that you can actually get legumes established. And so these legumes, when you get these legumes established in other species that you would typically not be able to seed after cover crops are, or after cash crops are harvested in the fall, uh, it can really change the whole sustainability of, of your system and increase uh, soil health dramatically. So when we survey farmers and we talk with farmers, they say that not being able to, that their number one uh, reason why they do not grow cover crops is because they don't have enough time after uh, crop harvest in the fall. And by doing this, you can get that cover crop established on time and actually grow these different species uh, and integrate them into your cropping system. So very exciting research going on at Cornell and across the US with cover crop interseeding. And we're now starting to see that they, they do have an impact. We are seeing, uh, fairly rapid response in terms of soil improvement. Uh, there's a recent paper that came out was showing after uh, just uh, four years with cover crop interseeding, we're starting to see indicators, improved uh, indicators of soil health. So uh, over a very short period of time, we're not necessarily increasing soil carbon, but we're starting to see these indicators like improved soil respiration, increased aggregate stability, increased active carbon. You know, these levels are going up. So very exciting research there. The other strategy uh, that I'd like to talk about is perennial grains. So all the grains that we eat uh, now uh, are annual crops, right? So we, we till and we replant them every year. And what we're trying to do is, is develop perennial grain crops. These are crops that you would plant once and then harvest for multiple years. So this is a, an illustration here just showing uh, what you would typically see on, on the left with an annual crop production on sloped land uh, where you have some runoff and you're getting creating some uh, erosion and, and uh, water quality challenges. By keeping the soil covered, okay, with a perennial crop for multiple years, uh, we're thinking that we can improve water infiltration, increase soil, uh, soil health, and get more of that water going into the soil and less of it running off and causing erosion and water quality problems. So in New York State, we're working with a number of farmers, four organic farmers uh, in particular, that have, uh, we're working with very closely, uh, growing some different perennial grain crops. One of them is called Kernza. Uh, this is a perennial grain. Uh, I have some seed uh, right here. It's a um, very small seed. This is a crop that is um, been domesticated. We're working with partners at the Land Institute in Kansas, also in France, and across, uh, across the, the U.S. Uh, but this crop, um, again, it's, it's, uh, it's different than all of your other grain crops. Um, it's, uh, it's new, and so we've taken a, a wild plant and have domesticated it and have, through recurrent selection have uh, selected for increased seed size. And so um, what's really exciting about this is that 
Uh, right now, we're at a tipping point with perennial grain production where we're seeing uh, large companies uh, become interested in Kernza uh, for increasing their sustainability of their operations. So one company is Patagonia Provisions. This is Patagonia, the clothing company. They've started a line, a, a food line, and they've uh, are starting to offer a beer uh, called Long Root Ale that's grown with or made with uh, Kernza. That's 15% Kernza in it. And now General Mills, uh, through Cascadian Farms, is very interested in, uh, in integrating Kernza into their product lines. They have a new cereal that will be coming out this October that has uh, Kernza in it. And so um, really exciting stuff happening right now in New York with our farmers. Uh, we're into our second year of harvesting. Uh, again, yields are low. We're having some challenges with harvesting. This is a new crop, unlike all the other annual grains. Uh, that are completely dry when you go to harvest. This one is still a bit green. So actually getting through the combine and working out some of these uh, logistical challenges, mechanical problems is what we're focused on. We're also very interested in developing agronomic recommendations, trying to figure out when you should seed this, what your seeding rate should be, what your fertility management should be. So that's uh, all part of this, this uh, research that we're doing. And you can see on the, the far right there, this is a picture of the root uh, of this crop. So on the uh, on the left here, over here, this is the single wheat, the perennial grain Kernza, and it has uh, that extensive root system. And so that's um, one of the reasons why it's, uh, in addition to keeping the soil covered, that's another reason why it, we think that it can have a major impact in improved soil health. So, like I said, I think this is an up and coming crop. Uh, there's still more work to be done, but keep an eye out for this and uh, happy to talk more about this if we have time later. So thank you very much. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.